Hello everybody! Today, we venture into the beautiful, the lush, the pretty world of pop music. We're gonna make a beat for Taylor Swift today. That's what we're gonna do, and I'm pretty excited about it. We got something nice and simple for y'all. Um, so yeah, this is how to make a Taylor Swift beat. Let's get into it. Oh, you know, you guys remember, if you guys like this, please like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell. We're almost 100 subscribers. Let's keep this thing going. I'm pretty excited. Also, we have new beats on the Beat Store Monday through Friday. That's Enquo on BeatStars.com, and also JoeyNE.me slash producer, dude. So if you guys want to do that, it really helps the channel, helps support your boy here. And now let's get into the video. I'm ready. All right, so we're going to get started here. We're going to look at uh, this ending part right here, and let's just kind of play through it first. That's what we end up with with our big chorus section there. So let's first let's talk about the uh, guitars here. <clears throat> so what I wanted to do, and I wanted to start with something that was rhythmic. I think that the biggest part about making pop music is having some type of underlick, right? So some type of uh, melodic chordal thing that's almost like a hook, right? So every section of your or every instrument in your song should be some type of a hook you should at least try to make it that right that's that's one of the biggest parts about pop music so we start off with this guy so we're using an acoustic guitar here acoustic pop it's always good it's always great so basically all i'm doing is we're just using thirds right so i think my chord progression is uh, c e minor d g c and then it's going to be C, E minor, D, G, A minor, G. And that's our chord progression there. So at this point, that's my main riff, right? That's my main thing that I'm trying to build out. So I'm going to try to fill everything else out around that. So one thing that we can do, one little trick, is we can just do little chord stabs uh, or like open chords um, on the uh, downbeat of all of these little uh, plucks here. So then we get something like this. And really that just fills it out. That kind of fills it out and makes it, uh, gives it a little bit more uh, beef and space and all that stuff. So all I'm doing for processing here, it's pretty much the same on both these guitars. I'm using the Vibe Strip, the acoustic guitar preset. So if you guys want to copy this, it's right here. And then I'm doing a little bit of EQ, taking out some of the lows and the low mids. And I'm doing the same thing on the other guitar. So now, <clears throat> what I want is something that's going to tie everything together. So I, I like to do a repeated line sometimes. I'm just playing the same things. What that does, if I'm playing the same line over and over again over these different chords, is every time a chord hits, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, make it sound different. Because if you think about the chord as um, the paper that you draw on, right, every time this lick hits a different piece of paper, it's going to sound different, right? I don't know if that made any sense or not. But just roll with me, dude. And on this, I did a little bit of sauce. I'm using the uh, acoustic guitar processing again. But I'm also using the shaper box to give it some movement, and I'm just panning it around. And uh, with that, we get this guy. And really what that's doing there is that's just kind of building up the groove. That's 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 giving it something to vibe with. It's really going to help when we get to the drums. Um, that's pretty cool. Now we're going to add an electric guitar in. And all I'm doing is just chord voicings on the electric guitar. Just a different texture, a different sound. Um, nothing super crazy. And for processing here, we're using the, guess what, the vibe strip. Love the vibe strip. We're using the guitars. I'm using the Archetype by Corey Wong. Um, the default preset. Nothing super crazy. All I'm doing is taking out a little bit of the lows. I changed the amp over to this guy, and we're adding a little bit of reverb on there too. And uh, then we're doing some EQ and some compression. That's gonna sound like this. And all I compressor is doing is it's just cutting off a little bit of those peaks. Really, we're not, we're barely, we're barely doing anything. It's more for color than anything else. We're just taking off a little bit of the peaks, leveling out just a little bit, because I wanted to still have some dynamic range. Um, now let's go ahead and get to the drums. 
So when I'm making the drums, I like to use sometimes a, a drum loop or a perk loop to kind of give me a groove to work with, and that's gonna sound like this guy here. You see, it really just locks it in, right? And then we're gonna build everything off of that, so next up we're gonna have a crash. are is just eighth notes and it's gonna be a two-step and do some velocity right here so loud quiet loud quiet I just copy that over next up we're gonna have a snare right here if you guys check this out on two and four then we're gonna layer a kick on there Simple kick patterns, simple drums. When we're making pop music, simple, right? Everything's gotta be simple. You wanna have space for the artist there. So I'm, I try to make these drums as simple as I can just to give a little bit of, uh, you know, groove. That's it. And also, if you check over here, I'm using my millisecond knobs. I turn the uh, hi-hats uh, forward about five milliseconds and the snare forward about seven milliseconds there. I think that's all I did there. Yep, didn't move that one at all. And really the millisecond knob is just trying to make it fit in with uh, this guy right here, this little uh, drum loop. So I'm just trying to make everything fit together and set on top of each other. For the bass, all I'm doing is the root notes. That's it, I'm doing eighth notes on the root notes. <laughs> So again, there's a theme here, right? Like I said, super simple. For the processing on the bass, I got the archetype Corey Wong, the uh, P bass preset, I didn't even touch it. And then we're using the uh, custom opto uh, and the bass woman full preset on the Slate Digital there. So now we have a more or less a full B, right? Uh, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add kind of some of the sauce up there. So what I did here um, is I sang some choir stuff in this joint. And we're going to mute all these and we're going to solo this guy. Um, I did some choir stuff. It's going to sound like this. So that's with my processing. Here's without. So we got a little bit of auto-tune on each one of those. And then if we look at this, right, we're doing a little bit of EQ um, to kind of make it sit in the back a little bit. We're using our virtual mix rack, the, uh, I'm messing around with the classic strip. So, these are the presets that I have. So I'm using some, uh, virtual channel for some, uh, some saturation. Then we did some EQ, a little bit more EQ, and then we're using <coughs> the FG2A to, uh, kind of kill that dynamic range to push in the back. With compression, one thing that I like to do with compression sometimes is I like to use it to push things backward. So as things go back in our stereo field, right, so not side to side, go backwards, is the dynamic range will decrease. Um, also, you will lose uh, low end and uh, you'll lose some high end too. So basically, as it goes back, it gets dull. So those are some really cool ways to uh, push things back in the mix. There are also reverb too, but in volume. Um, then I'm using the Cymatics uh, Origin to kind of give it that vintage feel. I've turned the chorus up because I think that sounded cool. And then uh, we have our EQ taking out a little bit more of that stuff. So again, just pushing it back in the mix and we get this guy. Pretty cool. And then the last little thing that I added on top of here was these little guitar lines. And basically what I did was I played a guitar line uh, uh, and then I played it again an octave down. And we get this. And I'm painting those hard left and hard right. And then I added one more little guitar thing on top. So super, super quiet, nice in the back there, nothing really crazy. And really what I'm trying to do is do a call and response with my other uh, guitar line there. So then, uh, if we play that all together, then we get this guy. Mm -hmm. 
Now we talk about arranging. All I'm trying to do with this intro here in verse, I'm slowly bringing stuff in. So I'm just starting with the uh, drum loop, the bass, uh, the plucky guitar, and the electric guitar. And then um, A bars in, I bring in my uh, uh, acoustic guitar hits. And then uh, we move to the chorus after that. I get a riser into, a cr into the crash there. Um, I'm not bringing this guy in yet over here, so we're just we're still we're trying to build the whole way. Now, if you move over into here, our main guitar is going to be our electric guitar, whereas the plucky guitar was the main guitar over here. Again, slowly bringing stuff in a little bit, a little bit of little bit of different instrumentation, and then we're right here into our um, last chorus. And then what's cool is I do a sting ending here. Go check this out. Little sting ending there. And that's really important if we're doing sync or anything like that. And what a sync, what a sting ending is, is basically when you swell up and then everything resolves on one note. It makes it very easy for uh, uh, people who are placing music to, uh, you know, cut in between songs and it's just super, super nice. So if you're pitching the sync or licensing or anything like that, you want the sting ending. Everything resolves at the end there. So I think that's what we got, dude. Let's go ahead and uh, play the beat.
like that's how I make a Taylor Swift or acoustic pop type beat right there. So if you guys like this, remember to like, subscribe, uh, turn the notification bell, do all that stuff. We're doing these uh, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So pretty excited. We also got new beats on Beat Store uh, and on the YouTube Monday through Friday too. So pretty exciting stuff, man. I love you guys. Uh, have a happy Monday. Go create something great. Uh, leave in the comments some that you guys are working on or leave some lyrics to this if you guys want to. Um, yeah, man. Catch y'all later. This is End Quote. Goodbye.